The next chemical property of benzene here we'll have on the broad is the Friedel Crafts alkylation. Now we hear of the alkylation process of a compound. It's simply the reaction of that compound, possibly with halogenal alkane, during which an alkyl from the halogenal alkane is transferred to that compound. And that is like what we have here in the Friedel Craft alkylation, which is the reaction between benzene with halogen that contains alkane. That is halogenal words alkane. Now, the catalyst we use here is also Lewis acid. It could be aluminum chloride or it could be iron 3 chloride, similar to what we saw during halogenation. What is the product obtained in the Friedel Craft alkylation of benzene? The product obtained is alkylated benzene. Is that okay? By alkylated benzene, we mean a benzene that contains what? An alkyl. I hope I'm communicating right. The reaction is similar to what we've been saying for sulfonation, for halogenation, for nitration. What happens in the first step is the production or formation of electrophile. But we want to take note of something. You know, we have primary halogenal alkane, secondary halogenal alkane, and tertiary halogenal alkane. If it is primary halogenal alkane that you use, the first step of the reaction will be a bit different from when you use either secondary or tertiary halogenal alkane. But the difference is in March. The only thing is that if you use a primary halogenal alkane, like here, this is methyl chloride. Methyl chloride. You see that the carbon bearing the chlorine, there is no alkyl group attached to that carbon. No alkyl group attached to the carbon. So this is a primary halogenal alkane. Is that okay? Now, if you use a primary halogenal alkane, react it with the Lewis acid, which is the catalyst, what you're going to get is a complex as a result of partial polarization of the alkyl. Partial what? Polarization. And that's why you see in this complex, you see partial positive charge on this carbon, partial negative charge on the chlorine of the alkyl, then attached to the aluminum chloride serving as well the catalyst. Then in the second step, now this complex, which is a partial polarized compound, is that okay? Will not attack the benzene. That's the ring, that's usual. Every other thing will follow the same process. The partial positive part of this complex will be transferred to the benzene ring, breaking one of the double bond. You have this, you can see it, right? The chlorine, which is partially negative in that polarized compound, will be transferred to the catalyst to give us ARCl4 minus. So that is that. Every other thing remains the same. The, the, the next step, which is the third step, the transfer of the proton to the ionic catalyst in this case now, and then the return of the double bond that was broken initially back to form the complete ring. Once the proton is transferred, this will give us HCl and what aluminum chloride, then CH3 only will be attached to this what's carbon. And this is our alkyl benzene. The name of that compound there is methyl benzene, which can also be called toluene. Alright? Now, what if you use either secondary or tertiary halogenal alkane? The only difference between what happens here and this when we use primary is simply the first step. Is that okay? In the first step, using primary halogenal alkane, the process is a partial polarization process. The process is what? A partial polarization process. Is that okay? It's a partial polarization process. But if you use secondary or tertiary halogenal alkane, the first step will be complete ionization process. This is the difference now, right? Now, when we talk about partial pol polarization and complete ionization, what's really different there? Look at this. The bond between the chlorine and the alkyl here in halogenal alkane was not broken completely. So it becomes a partial polarity. Is that okay? Partial polarization. We actually encounter something like that in the induct inductive effect, electronic effect in organic uh, molecule. Is that okay? We, are, we talk about chlorine can break completely if it gets enough electron from the carbon to which it's attached to. 
I will talk about inductive effect is related up to the second carbon atom. Anyway, let's keep that aside. Just trying to take it back to a little knowledge we know. Coming over here in complete polarization, what happens? This is a secondary halogen alkane. The name of this compound is 2-chloropropane. 2-chloropropane is a secondary halogen alkane. In this case, this chlorine can withdraw electrons from this carbon directly. This carbon will feed this particular carbon of the functional group more electrons, chlorine will withdraw. This carbon will still feed this carbon of the functional group electrons, chlorine will still withdraw. So chlorine has enough electrons to break up the compound. And so once it, that happens, there will be a complete breaking off of chlorine, not this one that is a partial break. Complete break off. Chlorine will be transferred completely to the catalyst to give us AlCl4 minus. And you can see that the alkyl becomes what? A carbocation on its own, becoming a complete positive, positively charged ion. I hope you see what's happening here. So that's just the difference between using secondary and or tertiary halogen alkane and then using what? Primary. The remaining steps, step two and step three, is the same. This completely ionized compound, the carbocation alkyl, will now attach the benzene ring. You can see that. Next stage to transfer the proton. This arrhenium ion will transfer the proton to the catalyst used, and then you get this. Of course, this is also alkylated what benzene. Mm -hmm. We can call this 2-phenyl propane because the benzene is attached to the second ring of the compound. If I come from here, one, two, three. Are you seeing that right? One, two, three. So you see that benzene is attached to the second carbon atom of this alkyl chain. And therefore, we can call this 2-phenyl. You know, when benzene is seen as an attachment, we refer to it as what? Phenyl. C6H5. So that compound is 2-phenyl propane. And now we want to look at the last chemical property of benzene, the Friedel-Craft acylation, right? Have you heard of an acyl group before? Derivatives of alkanoic acid. Is that okay? We have one like the acyl chloride, that is acid chloride, the acyl anhydride, that is acid anhydride. Is that okay? So when these groups react with benzene, the name of the reaction is known as friedel craft acylation. And what happens there is simply the introduction of the acyl group, that is RC doubly bonded to oxygen. You can see that. The introduction of this group called the acyl group into the benzene ring. That's really what happened. And when this group is introduced into benzene ring, the product formed is called a phenyl ketone or phenyl alkanone. That's the product form. Is that, is that okay? And uh, we also want to take note of the fact that catalyst is used for this reaction. You can use aluminium chloride, you can use boron fluoride as the catalyst. The scheme for this reaction still follows the general process of what you've seen so far for the four reactions or chemical properties that have been treated already. That's including halogenation, uh, sulfonation, nitration, and Friedel Craft alkylation. So, what happens? The acyl group, you can see I use an acid chloride here. That is acyl chloride, acid chloride. It's going to react with the catalyst, aluminum chloride, to give us an acylium ion. Oh, what happens there is a transfer of this chlorine because this chlorine has a lot of electrons supplied to it. You know, this R here represents CHCH. I might complicate it. So it has a lot of electrons feeding it so that it breaks off completely from this acyl chloride compound and then to give us this ion. Is that okay? As usual, AlCl4 minus the ion will be formed there. In the second stage, this acylium ion, which in this case now is serving as the electrophile, there's a positive charge here. Is that okay? Will attack the benzene ring, breaking a bond, and of course we're going to see this. Please, it's important for us to take note that both in Friedel Craft alkylation and Friedel Craft acylation, the carbon of the functional group is the carbon that will attach 
to the carbon of the benzene. Is that okay? Please don't go and use like in this case now this R cannot be written to attach to this carbon. It's this R you don't represent other carbons. So I don't forget to me that's other alkyl groups. It's this carbon of the functional group in a site compound that will attach to the carbon of what? The benzene ring. Take note of that please. So in the third stage, the proton will be transferred to the catalyst ion, and then we get our full substituted word benzene. This compound is our phenyl alkanone. Perhaps, let me write here. Phenyl, phenyl alkanone. Or you can say phenyl ketone. You know, ketone and alkanone are the same thing. So let us assume that this is something like, uh, let's say the ethanoid chloride. Let's assume it's ethanoid chloride I use from there, which means this R will be CH3 linked to C, double bonded to oxygen, and then CL. Ethanoid chloride. Then the name of the final compound produced will be phenyl ethanoid, phenyl ethanone. Is that okay? To be phenyl what? Ethanone. Suppose this is a butanoid chloride. Butanoid chloride. Is that okay? And it undergoes this reaction. The compound obtained will be phenyl butanone. Phenyl butanone. So take note of that, please. Well, we are done with these chemical properties. This note is very important because something I've not been stating all through, I just left it that at the end, I would highlight that. You know, during organic molecular reaction, we have a step, a stage that is called the slow step, and then the other that is called the fast step. If the reaction it, uh, takes place in multiple stages, all right? Now, it's important for you to take note, please, that the slowest step in all of this chemical reaction of benzene that have been considered so far is that step where the electrophile attacks the ring. And of course, I think we saw that in the second step of the reaction, is that not so? Then the fastest step, or the first step, is that step where the proton is being transferred to the catalyst ion which of course usually happen in the third step of the reaction. So you've known the stage called the slow step and that called the word fast step.